Hey, what's going on guys? It's Todd Warden for FaceTime. That's what we're watching right now. We are watching FaceTime with Todd Warden. Hold on. Let's try that again. So good evening everybody. You are with FaceTime with Todd Warden. I'm your host, Todd Warden. I hope everybody's doing great this evening. Hope everybody is well. Um, a lot of things going on, a lot of things going on, so we just haven't... <clears throat> I am uh, really, really excited about tonight's guest, and uh, he's a good friend of mine, and we're going to be chopping up a lot tonight. We have a lot of great things to talk about. As you can hear, I got a little jazz playing in the background to honorate this man. Uh, we'll get into a couple of things right now which uh, we want to talk about. First of all, I want to give it up to my man, LeVon Green. Uh, it's his birthday. I'm not going to say his age, uh, but he's definitely a great man, good father, great brother. Um, I miss him a lot. I haven't seen him in a while. But LeVon, this interview goes out to you tonight, man. Happy birthday, brother. I love you, dog. Um, also, we have some uh, cool announcements. As of tomorrow... I'm leaving this abode right here, and I have just locked up a deal where FaceTime with Todd Warden is going to have his own studio, which is pretty cool. So starting tomorrow night, I will be in my new location, and it's going to be FaceTime with Todd Warden in New York City Studios, and it's actually going to be at Lounge Studios, New York City. Great, great bunch of guys that own a studio, and I'm excited to start and continue, not start, but continue my show there, uh, which is going to be great. And not only are we going to continue tomorrow night, but I decided let's start it on Friday. Why? Because if you guys haven't already heard, tomorrow night is the premiere on Amazon Prime of Coming to America. And in the house, tomorrow night, I will be interviewing Casey Amos. And John Amos, Mr. McDowell, right here on FaceTime with Todd Wharton, live at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll get our Mr. McDowell in the house. So I'm pretty excited about that to start off the new studio and an amazing guest and coming to America. I love it. But before we get there, I have an amazing guest coming on tonight. Uh, this guy's a gentleman. He's a father. Um, great man. Amazing musician. And I don't know him that long, but... The person that I've met, uh, he's just completely genuine, and I'm just real proud to know him as a friend, and call him a friend, and I'm honored to have him here tonight. So we are going to bring on Grammy Award winning trumpeteer, composer, and producer, my dude, Keon Harold. So Keon, when you're ready to go, we'll get this start off. Hey, good evening, sir. How are you? Yo, what's up, Todd? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I had the little ambulance going. I was like with the candle, got a little jazz going. <laughs> so I was just doing my thing right now. I think your, uh, your phone kind of froze a little. Make sure you don't have your Bluetooth on, bro. Because a lot of people don't know your Bluetooth does fight with your Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, they're, both, they're both off. I'm just using regular cell. Beautiful. Are, That's what I would be. Yeah. So, I'm good, man. I'm good. I've been uh, working hard. Not as hard. Well, I work hard, but you've been um, you've been at it, man. And I've been seeing you move. And I'm impressed. I'm really impressed with the, uh, the strides that you're making towards everything. Uh, your music, your family, justice. Um a lot of people cannot hold all those eggs in one basket, but for some reason, you're one of these guys that can grab 20 eggs and make the dopest omelet of all time. You know what I'm saying? I try, so. I try man. Compartmentalizing things, important things, is is important to do. And to be able to handle it is, is definitely, you know, um, an act of patience that I continually try to learn every day. <laughs> What's yeah. up, everybody coming over? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yep. Talking How is everybody doing? So for those who are coming on, uh, just to give you an update, I am interviewing right now with Mr. Keon Harold, uh, amazing man. Uh, as I introduced, you definitely 
can find him easily on IG at Keon Harold with two R's right on Instagram. Please follow this gentleman. Um, he's not only a musician, he's a civil rights activist, an amazing father, and obviously somebody looked up to a great humanitarian. So if you guys want somebody to really follow, this is definitely you guys should follow. Um, so Keon, we're going to start out, talk about a little things here and there. My interviews always go real smooth. So we're going to have a good time with this tonight. Um, I do know that you're originally from um, Ferguson, correct? Yeah. Missouri. Originally from Ferguson. Right. So, yeah, tell us a little about that, because that's where a lot of your roots come from. Yeah, yeah, Ferguson was cool. Growing up in Ferguson, um, it taught me a lot. Taught me a lot about character. Taught me a lot about, you know, following through, pushing through, and grabbing for exactly what it is that I wanted out of life. Um, and whatever mm -hmm. I want, I, it, it taught me that I had to actually go out for it and, and, and reach for something higher. You know, my dad used to tell me that, you know, growing up in Ferguson, growing up in St. Louis, that it was like a cow pasture. You got to go if you want something greater, something bigger. So, you know, as soon as I was able, I headed to New York City. Yeah, and when you got to New York City, I believe um, your breakthrough if I'm not mistaken, you ended up working with Common, correct? And did some sort of Afrobeats funk type of collaboration? Oh, well, well, that was working with Common was one of the first things. Um, you know, when I moved to New York City, I studied at the New School um, and I met a lot of amazing people. Um, you know, when Marcellus um, was my was a mentor of mine and a lot of different people really, you know, supported me. Um, and I had a lot of good friends who were connected to other people. Like my friend Bilal Oliver was um, a major wow. singer. Um, that song, Won't You Be My Soul Sister. Um, what was that? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, whoa, whoa. You could sing? Uh, Am I hearing that? <laughs> I, do, I do a little bit. I do a little bit. What's up, y'all? All right. Hipster. Um, you know, he was around. He went to our college. Robert Glass, an amazing artist. The Strickland brothers, um, so many amazing people. And we would just, you know, we would sit in the hallway and just, you know, vibe out and, and share music and share thought. Um, so that was always good vibes. And, you know, Bilal was best friends with Rob. Rob was, um, you know, knew, he knew me. So he recommended me that I try out for Common. And the rest was history. Um, I went on tour with um, the Like Water for Chocolate campaign and album. You know, which is beautiful. That's crazy, man. To really stand on the shoulders of the great Roy Hargrove. Rest in peace. Yeah, and you, you know, it's funny, man. I mean, you're talking about standing on the greats. And you know what's going to be really cool? I guarantee you. This is a guarantee. I'm telling this to everybody. In about 10 years, when people start working with you, when you get to that age or, I don't know, you're probably 20. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but they're going to be like... Yeah, I used to work with the great Keon Harrell. Because that's not I mean, dude, I had the experience to hear you live, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, it was at some unfortunate times. But, dude, you made me cry, bro. Like, oh, man. <laughs> I don't cry for a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I kept telling people it was cold outside. <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, dude, you're an amazing, amazing musician and we're going to talk a lot about that but i gotta ask you grew up in a family one of 16 children is that right yeah that's correct 16 kids i gotta tell you something dude the only time i've ever heard of that there was a mother there were kids and then there was a big ass shoe <laughs> that's what i grew up on wow. yeah. back to the nursery to the nursery room <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, this is this is very real. My mom and dad have fourteen kids together. Um, wow. And my dad had two more. My mother had one more. So you know, I kn I know them all. <laughs> I can say their say their birthdays with all my nieces and nephews. Come from a great family. People love each other. So that was you know oh one God. of the big things that we we learn how to love each other more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I that I I I mean, bro, I have two brothers, and 
sometimes I forget their name, and you know we get into fights here and there. But that has to be in them. Yeah, that has to be. Well, you met Keith. I mean, when Keith was talking about me, I'm just like, yeah, whatever, dude. <laughs> but it it had to have been an amazing experience to have so many bro you know brothers and sisters, different elements of of humor and sarcasm. Um, so I, I think a lot of you, there's probably a little personality of every one of them in you, Absolutely. right? Um, and that, that's crazy, man. Some people wish they just have one. You had so many. And you know what that meant, too? You know how people just have kids, just have kids, you know, and they're like, yeah, let's just have a couple of kids and we're good. Hmm. It really sounded to me, and I could be wrong because I'm from a divorced family. It sounded like your mom and dad really had a love for each other where they just wanted to create amazing kids. I mean, that's what it sounds like. I mean, they, I could say yes, and I could also say no. I mean, I've heard them say that, you know, <laughs> at times they would try not to have more kids, but they just did. My mother would say if she was here that, you know what, God chose her to be a person to bear all these children. And she mm -hmm. would, you know, spend some nights asking God, why? Why me? Why do you, why do you, you know, continually put me through this? Um, even though she loved everybody, but, you know, as a, as a person who had to deal with so many kids, she, you know, <laughs> she still wanted to know why, because it's not the easiest burden to raise no. that many kids, you know, that many personalities, that many miles to feed that many people to you know to take to to practice every day that many people to to inspire and mentor and coach and build up and you know and feed because she could definitely cook mother was my mom was a was a was a beast those are the best moms man those are the best moms you know yeah the ones that can cook are the best the best oh man i that that's just crazy so your music career um I'm I'm glad I'm starting to get you a lot more. Let let's backtrack a little because some people ask me how we met, and that's just a question a lot of people ask how I met so many these great people, and we talk about it once. It was in a conversation, but we'll tell everybody now. Um, if you guys don't know, there's a gentleman named Alvin Clayton, uh, one of the first black GQ models, and probably one of the coolest guys I've ever personally met. I was there at his restaurant in New Rochelle, and uh, and Keon was there with, um, I think it was like a Harlem Whiskey Festival, right? And uh, somebody's calling in now, like, yo, get me on the, get me on the tube, man. Get me on, get me on. Hold on, give me one second. <laughs> this is my son. One second, one second. We're going to go on a commercial break. All right. So why uh, Keon's on a commercial break. What's Have you guys ever felt not so fresh? Okay. Well, now, just raise your arms and do a little deodorant, and you'll feel so much better. And that is brought to you by the Not So Fresh Deodorant. <laughs> and we're back with Keon. <laughs> uh, I, I have, my son is on his way. Um, I did do a commercial. <laughs> oh, somebody asked how many kids. It was 17 of us. So, yeah. Yeah, they're probably like, wait, what? Unbelievably true. It's a, it's a real thing. Yeah, it's crazy. But there's a lot of love there. Um, so getting back, when we were at the uh, restaurant, Keon was attending this whiskey festival, Harlem Whiskey. Um, they were in New Rochelle. And there was a lot of amazing people there. It was great attorneys, powerful. Uh, all of Diddy's crew that created Ciroc, FUBU was there. Yeah. Uh, and... I was there doing a meeting with, with Alvin. You guys invited me in, and and I felt honored. I'm like, yeah, I would love to attend this. And it was a tasting, and me and you ended up at the same table, and we just kicked it. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when I realized how cool you were, because I, me and you didn't talk about really what we did. We, we mentioned it briefly. Mm -hmm. But that's when I knew you were good people, because I always tell people, if you meet somebody, and right off the bat, they start name-dropping, resume <laughs> dropping. You know what I'm saying? And just they, like, hey, my name's Keon. I'm a Grammy this, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm that. It's just like, whoa, whoa, dude, I, I'm just trying to have a drink. All right. That's why I warn people, realize when you're talking to somebody, make sure it's a conversation because if they're just dropping, they're just trying to impress 
if you know you're already impressionable, you don't need to drop nothing. Just be yourself and they'll respect you even more. And I had a lot of respect for you. And from there, we just, you know, chatted once in a while. And it was a great time. But then um, I started listening to your music. And so speaking of your music, what are the influences behind your music? I know you work with some people. And I know Marcellus was a mentor. But growing up, what were the biggest influences behind your music? Because you have an eclectic area of what you do. Yeah. Um, growing up, I mean, jazz was clearly an influence, you know, from Duke Ellington to Count Basie to Miles Davis and Freddie Hubbard and Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder and Michael Jackson and Prince, um, you know, and so many others, Diana Ross. Um they all influenced me, all made, always, and Gladys Knight, especially. Um, Eddie Kendrick. Wow. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I, 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 I love, you know, Motown sound, and I love, I just love really good music, really good music that, has, that comes from the soul. So it, that always influenced yeah. me, influenced my decisions musically. Um, for me, music has to cut through your soul and cut through your cut through auras. And if it doesn't happen that way, I really am not interested in it. So, yeah. um, you know, working on my album, I, I, I put a lot of different things together from the, from the idea of me loving Jay Dillon, um, as far as beats is concerned, from the idea of loving the Beatles sonically, from the idea Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, you hit it in the nose. Music that cuts. I love how you said music that cuts the soul. Um, that's a big thing with me. Uh, I, I used to tell somebody a long time ago that the definition of a classic is when you can just play it over and over again without even hesitation. And you can never get sick of it. You know, um, you, I saw you in a picture with somebody who I love, uh, Erica Badu monster fan of Erica Badu. Her music just like, I, I can just, you know, I love it. In My Hair, all that song. And um, who's that? Oh, yeah? I can't see him like blind. <laughs> are, you, are you talking to me? Say that again? Is something going on? Is is are we? Is it went silent. No, we're on, but I think you have a bad connection. Really? Yeah, yeah. Where, where, where? Can you hear me now? I think you had that going on when we were on that conference call too. Yeah. Is it? Is it uh, a little better? Is it better? Kind of like a robot, a little. Weird. I don't know why that is. It's okay. It happens. Listen, the one thing I've always learned is we live by the technology, we buy the technology. Exactly. You know? And it's just the way it is. So Am I now you know what I'm loving right now. I uh, if a lot of people don't know that are on here, um, just great things are happening to you right now. We're going to talk about other things, but recently Spotify, which is really really honorable, just uh, pretty much sponsored you, and kind of like pretty much made you the face of Black Lives Matter for almost a month. Um, in New York City, you had billboards in Times Square, uh, right near Madison Square Garden, all over. And you know what the best part about it was? It was you and your son. That's it. That's it. I uh, I loved everything about that billboard. They didn't have to, you know how billboards that write too much stuff on it? Your thing was just clear as day. Mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter, father and son. And I just looked at it. You know how I looked at that? Because I love Black Lives Matter. I just looked at that as, yeah, humans matter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's the way I look at Black Lives Matter and all these great movements. At the end of the day, in a whole, humans matter. And uh, because Black Lives is such a strong movement, and unfortunately it needs to be there. And I have to say unfortunately because it shouldn't never be there in the first place. If people just 
got their head out of their ass and stop acting stupid, you know? Um, but that was just an amazing billboard I saw, which is really cool. And you put an album together, correct? Uh, just all these great songs that were inspirational to you? Yeah, I, I put a playlist together um, for for um, Black Lives Matter, um, Spotify's playlist. So, you know, they wanted me to put a list of songs that have influenced me over the last year or so, or songs that really go with me, songs that really um, inspire me. And it, was a, it was a beautiful thing. I'm really thankful to Spotify for allowing me that platform, my son and I. Um, yeah. It was it was it was a beautiful a beautiful thing. I got a chance to go to Times Square and Penn, um, Penn Station as well as um, you know as well as in Canada. They put that billboard everywhere, which is oh wow, which is which is super inspiring. I'm super thankful that my son and I got a chance to show that moment um, and basically present a be present a good solid image of black people. You know, the idea of racism is a human problem. It's not just a white and black problem. It's a human problem that people need to really get deep in. Um, mm -hmm. And these biases are the thing that, that really, really keep us from coming to a place of um, understanding. So, you know, myself and a couple of people, I'm actually working really hard to, to, to create an entity to try to combat bias. Um, these un... Um, unworked uh, out beliefs that people have that would make them, you know, do things that, that, that could actually cause harm to other people, unfortunately. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I'm glad, I'm liking the way the conversation is flowing because I was about to go into that. But this is what I love about FaceTime with Todd Warren. When we both get comfortable, interview just flows. And I'm loving how you just flew into that. So let's talk about that because if people are on another planet, that are on here right now. Um, Keon and his family, unfortunately, was the face of news for at least a month. And the only reason why I say unfortunate is because what happened was beyond unfortunate, should have never have happened. And nobody ever wants to be in, in the news because of something tragic or negative. It's just not in our DNA, unless you're a reality star, because for some reason, everybody wants to beat the crap out of each other for money. I don't know what that's all about. But um, I was uh, laying down in my bed, watching GMA, it was in the morning, because I watch it every day. And this is four months after I met you, and I'm looking on the screen, and I'm like, wait, what? And I had to raise the volume, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? I thought like you landed a new album or something. Uh, and then, yeah, seriously, I, I thought something happened. I'm like, yo, what's going on here? But then I hear this, and then he starts showing the news, and I'm like, and that's when I contact you right away. I went, bro, what is going on? And he told me, and I'm like, yo, I'm there. I'm like, and I don't go to a lot of rallies, and it's not that I don't believe in them. I've just been noticing a lot of peace rallies that have to do with negative stuff, right, to come out for the right reasons. A lot of them end up turning violent. And uh, it's kind of a scary thing to attend. But when I saw this, I'm like, I'm going because I don't want to go to a rally because somebody just got killed. I want to go to a rally to help prevent that from being the next level. Because it seems like more people come out when somebody gets murdered and nobody should ever get murdered. You know what I'm saying? Like Brianna, Floyd, they should be on this earth today living, right? None of that crap should have ever happened. But I'm saying this now Guys, if you're going to come out when somebody gets murdered, come out also when something like this happens so we can all stand together because part of our job is to prevent from yeah, not going to I the mean, next the level. Is black lives matter, but black lives also matter alive. They matter and they're yep. vibrant, you know, in, in, the, in the sense of being, you know, living and being vibrant. And that's very important. Right. And that's the reason why. Um, this campaign, I'm not really, I'm not letting go because it's very important um, that, you know, my kids and your kids and other people's kids, you know, people of color, um, we go through this all the time. Not that my situation is, you know, uber special or anything like that, but at some, at sometimes you need something. Um, you need a person who could actually stand up to scrutiny for actually to create a precedent going forward that, you know what, it's not okay to just, 
you know, treat somebody of color with disrespect. It's not okay, That's right. you know, to treat a, to treat a child, um, you know, disrespectful. It's not okay to accost a child. It's not okay to just attack a child just because you feel like it. Um, you know, right. so at this point, I'm pushing as hard as I possibly can with my attorney and um, my son's mother and, and many other people, people on here. I appreciate everybody for signing the petitions and, you know, supporting and sharing and, and showing. Um, that would make me just be like, you know what, forget it, or don't, don't, don't make it a big deal or whatever. But so you know, I'm pushing the issue because I know it, it, it's so. Much over the world i've gotten of course. calls from japan and china and australia and canada and everywhere else in brazil and in the virgin islands people call me you know daily you know i'll go on live and they'll be asking me how's your son how's everything doing you know how's everybody doing and i'm i'm blessed to say that we're doing much better um fighting through it but at the same time not giving up the fight yep and i love how you say you know about <clears throat> not want to stand back and saying, hey, it's not a big deal. Well, you know what? It is a big deal, just like you said, because the fact is somebody like you needs to make it a big deal to make people realize this is a big deal. You know, I'm a white guy, if you guys haven't noticed, right? I'm a white guy, but I'm not a white guy. I'm a human, but I also recognize this has been a big deal since day one, and it pisses me off because the fact of the matter is I don't know – I don't know what it means to be an African-American, bro. I just don't. And I told you that before. I don't. I have no idea. Is, does white supremacy exist? Hell freaking yeah, it exists. Does racism exist? Yeah. Is there white privilege? Do I go through white privilege? Yes. I'm not going to deny that. You know, um, my little brother actually says something to you uh, that he went through, right? He was out to dinner at a diner or something. The check came and the lady immediately just slid the check to him. Mm -hmm. when the person across from him was his good friend who was of color and my little brother got pissed off like why did why didn't you just put it in the middle of the table why you put it towards me because the fact is is that these younger generation kids are being trained by people who are just ignorant morons and i'll say it i don't care if you're on here or not if you're a racist you're an idiot straight up like it doesn't make sense how you don't like somebody just for the matter of fact of the color of their skin. It is the dumbest crap I've ever heard in my life. And I joke around with people saying, you know, you don't like him because he's dark, right? Okay. But you do realize when you're walking outside that that sun's probably going to hit you on the ass. And you're probably going to get a little darker by the time you get home. So what are you going to do? You got to bob and weave from the mirrors until your skin color comes back? No. So if you go to the beach to get a tan... Because we all know that when you have brown skin, you look healthier, right? So you're trying to be the healthiest type of human being, but the same people that you're hating on every day because you're just ignorant and stupid. And that's the way I look at life. It has to do with a lot of the biases, man, um, and misconceptions. It's all about miscommunications and microaggressions that people don't really realize that we're more alike than we are than, than different. We are much more alike than different. We typically want yeah. the same we typically want the same things. We want the Yeah. It's a chain of events. Um, in, in my scenario, there was a chain of events that happened that, that you know, this person, it, as it does, the only thing happens is, I guess the breakdown is when somebody doesn't believe a person of color, um, when somebody doesn't believe 
a, 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 a different gender. You know, at that point, that that system is 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 started. It's like pressing a button on a on a controller, on a game controller. It's like pressing go. Yeah. Um, and at that point, that person can be marginalized or victimized, hurt, killed, you know, arrested or whatever. All these things happen, and you know, is is it's too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I completely com completely agree with you. When we were standing there uh, in downtown Manhattan, um, you know, it was great when you and Kat were speaking. You guys speak so eloquently. You really do. Um, I don't even think I said that word right. <laughs> eloquent, right? Um, and I kind of said to you, like, you know, for somebody who plays the trumpet this well, I didn't think you could speak like that. You're pretty much the Why trash not, man? Why not? What? I said, why not? Because when when somebody can play, when I when I see you're a great dad, you're a great trump trumpeter, you're a public speaker, you don't get a lot of people that have all those fields perfectly down, right? And I'm standing there, and I never heard you speak before, and that's when I cried. And you could probably catch it in the video. I don't know if it's ABC or whatever, but I was kind of like, <laughs> a lot of boys don't make me cry. I think the last time I cried is because somebody ate the last of the Doritos in the bowl at the Super Bowl. <laughs> so it's just like, come on, man. But um, you and Kat, when you spoke, you know what the best part about your speech is? The media did not move their head. They all listened, hmm. every one of them. Even though they were there to film it and cover it, I've never seen the media so fixated on two people in my life. You know what, it was it is, man? It has, crazy. It has to do with truth, man. Most people can vibrate and, and resonate with, the, with when something is truthful and when they can, um, you know, when they can empathize um, with somebody. You know, this thing, again, the situation was biased and, and racist and systemically wrong. But at the same time, it comes down to people can recognize a human error. People can recognize a problem right. with humanity. And people, I feel like most people genuinely want um, the best. People want people to do better. People genuinely are, you know, genuinely good hearted. I think so. I think yep. most people are genuinely good hearted and I feel like, you know, some decisions are just misguided. Um, and that has to do with biases that have been perpetuated by the system. So now is the time that we continually educate people um, to do better. People don't know how to do better unless they know better. So as yep. a person, you know, so that's the reason why I'm speaking out because some people might not even understand how they perpetuate the system. You know, and that happens by just not yeah. saying nothing, by by being silent when when injustices um, are are present. Yeah. You know, if if it's there's an injustice to one of us, it's an injustice to all of us. That's what Martin said, and it's fact. That's right. It's true. That's right. So often people yep. are you know taken advantage of because somebody just didn't say something. They didn't they didn't recognize the opportunity that they could have been a hero at that point by just simply saying something. Right. hundred percent. Um, you know what it is? I, I think the reason why a lot of people don't say anything, I think it's for two reasons. One, um, people don't know how to handle it. Sometimes, um, they may be scared to speak out because it is a scary thing to do to fight for civil rights, because whether people know it or not, when you put your face out there, you know, some people don't want to deal with the negative, right? And it's understandable, you know, it's not that they're not supporting it, just some people are scared and I get it. Um, but I'm asking everybody now, even for me and Keon, but obviously more for Keon, guys, you don't have to attend a rally to stand up. You could sit down and stand up. It, it's just about talking. If you're at a Thanksgiving, talk about it. If you're with, you know, you don't have to go crazy. But the only way to solve a situation is to talk about it. And the reason why I'm saying that right now, and I'm going to put it to you this way, Keon, we all have four years to really embrand what equality really means right now. We have four years. And the reason why I'm saying that is because there's an administration right now that's pretty much cleaning up a mess that was created, right? The creation was there, but I always tell people that the flame was just escalated. 
by a certain administration, right? I'll do the Whoopi Goldberg, you know, you know who, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we have four years to really get it more into people's heads that, guys, look, look, look at us together. Like, this is what it's about. We human, right? Because when the new administration comes in again, and I guarantee it's going to come back, something's going to happen. So in order to have peace for at least four years, more and more people really have to recognize the truth, right? You don't have to be angry all the time. You, you could speak about it a little, and you could talk about it a little. There's nothing wrong with it, guys. There really isn't. If you want to come out and stand up, do it. But I'm telling you guys right now, do not come out if you're just coming to get on the camera, okay? And I'm going to say this right now, and there's a reason why. This is why I got a, lo a lot of love for you. I was supposed to do a press conference. It got messed up because, honestly, I, I booked it a week before, so there was no time for the press to come in. That was my fault. But you know what I love, dude? You still came out. Of course. You stood by That's my okay. side. You know what I'm saying? Your boy Soraya stood by my side. A couple of other people, my boy DJ Diamond, my friends. We just stood there, and I spoke to TMZ. Now, TMZ saw the video. They didn't put it out. And you want to know why I didn't put it out? I spoke to TMZ because I'm not a celebrity. That's fine. But I have to message out, right? And what I'm trying to tell people is the message should not be because the media is there. The message should be because the message needs to be there, right? So when Keon is doing something, I'm there 24-7. If I can't stand behind him, I'm going to stand beside him. If I can't get beside him, I'm going to stand to the right. If I can't stand all the way to the light, damn it, I'm going to go to the left. And if I have to, I'll stick it up with the press. Man, we got we got to support each other. That's that's very important, man. We got, you know, we got to recognize the opportunity to support people. Sometimes we got the crate in a barrel scenario, and if we could just support people in 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 in, in their truth, you know, I think this world would be very very different. Shout out to Syria who was there. He came out right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, shout out to everybody who, who's here on the live. Hello. I can see some of the comments. Yep. I can't see all of them. Um, you know. Yeah. That's they, the only bad yep. thing about live is when we get done, I can't share it with the uh, Yeah, say so unity the is life. wealth. Unity but again, guys, I'm on. Facts. Facts. Unity, unity is huge. Wealth. And guys, just to let you guys know, right now I'm on live with Keon Harold. You can definitely follow him on IG. Keon Harold with two R's. Definitely follow me, Todd Warden Official, W-H-A-R-T-O-N. I'll get into more later because it's about Keon right now. So, Keon, um, you have a lot of great things coming up. And you know what? I love the fact that you hooked up with Ben Crump. And uh, I had the honor of sitting down with you guys at the table. And, again, I'm always going to thank him and you for inviting me to that lunch. Um, you know what the best part about that lunch was? when you guys were talking about white privilege, right? Mm -hmm. And me and, and the two white attorneys were sitting there at the table and we just looked at each other and we couldn't help but agree. But it was the first time I was ever at a table where pretty much all the races and different genders were in there too, right? We were all on the same page. And I never felt so much comfortability in my life, bro. It was crazy the conversations that were going on in that room. I mean, and you know what it that's goes, what I think more people need to do. Yeah, yeah for sure. And, it, and it's a conversation um, in, the, in, the, in the basic sense. Man. Right. 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 
Right. Right. Yeah, Keon, hold on. I got five people saying that they can't hear you, bro. Yeah. It, you know what it is? Your audio, for some reason, keeps... I think you have a bad connection. Yeah, but your picture is stuck. You know what we're going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you out, and then I'm going to re-request you, all right? So guys, hold on. I'm going to try to get him right back. Let's see if we can reconnect it. Let's see if that works, guys. How's that? Hey, Keon, are you in the basement or something like that, bro? Okay. Give him a moment, everybody. Um, I think somebody just said it right. Uh, Kat, I think you might have said it. He may be downstairs, and that's probably why he uh, we can't hear him. Um, he's probably in a bad location, so hopefully he can move to another area. You guys were getting that, right? He was, like, coming in and out. He was kind of, like, frozen half the time, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I kind of assumed that as well. So, guys, while we're still waiting for Keon to come back, uh, definitely follow me, Todd Wharton Official. Um, to give you a little background on me, I run New York City's Peace Concert, which we're making a big announcement uh, soon. Uh, this summer, it's, it's a big deal, so definitely keep up with that. Um, Keon's right here now. Let me see if I can get him back. All right, see if we can get him in again. Should be coming in in one sec. Yo. Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah, it's definitely a lot better. Are you in the basement or something like that? No, no, I'm in my place, but sometimes it gets weird. New York is funny. Yeah, yeah we kind of figured, because a lot of people are saying it kept uh, recycling your side. So it happens. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um, but anyway. We're back. We're back. We are back. What's up, Robbie? We go way back, man. Robbie used to work with Prince. We oh, really? With, with Maxwell. Um, yeah, speaking, speaking of that, um, just to actually get this down here, I was looking through your bio before. Yeah. Let me tell you something, man. Not people dream sometimes of performing with one great. You have a plethora. Like you been literally blessed, haven't. Been blessed oh my way. bro, Snoop Dogg, Jay Z, yeah. yeah. Beyonce, Rihanna, Eminem, Maxwell, Anthony Hamilton. Uh, I'm literally naming the top of all the genres in that category. Yeah. That is beyond crazy, bro. Congratulations. And I'm telling you, they're going to turn around and be like, yo, I work with Keon. I'm telling you, Beyonce's probably home like, yo, we got to work with Keon again. Hmm. You know, we got to do a new album. Because if JD's comes out with another album, I want a Keon Harold trumpet in one of those songs. Hmm. I want a head crack. I want to get some trumpet in there. And speaking oh. of that, you performed recently. We're going to get back to the other combo in a minute. But you performed recently in one of the greatest stages in New York City at the Apollo yeah, yeah. with D'Angelo, bro. D'Angelo and Friends. How was that? 
Oh, it was fantastic, man. Got a chance to to open up the show with my brother D'Angelo. I mean, I toured with him, um, and he. I mean, he's always been a legend to me. So it was a, it was a beautiful thing. I mean, the song was great. Just a duet with 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 one of the greatest to ever do it was very special to me. And to see hundreds of thousands of people who tuned in to check that out, you know, mm -hmm. is definitely one of those bucket list kind of things. Um, oh my God! I'm definitely, pretty sure I was the first trumpet player to be on verses. I'm pretty sure about that. I can imagine. Yeah, I've never heard him do anything with trumpets, but uh, every time I hear D'Angelo, I'm like, I want some of your brown sugar. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Oh, oh my God, man! Yeah, that puts me. Don't be the same before. Yeah, I can't. Even, I can't because if I start singing, I'm gonna have to grab something to get my voice up that high. We ain't doing that right now. So, <laughs> um, what age yeah. did you start playing? I was like six years old when I started wow. playing the trumpet. Six years old. Well, you were. I'm assuming you you were in the band in school. Yeah, later. But the way I yeah. started, my grandfather started a drum and bugle chord. That's how I started playing. Do you uh, play more than the trumpet? Because usually somebody like yourself who's musically inclined, where you have a plethora of different instruments that you play. Yeah, I mean, I, I play the trumpet, you know. I sing and I, I produce music, make beats and tracks and stuff. You know, I compose and arrange, so I'm always doing something. Lage, what's up, brother? Lage is on the other side of the globe. That's my brother, amazing guitarist, amazing musician. He says, but it's not just about change of attitude. It's changing the systemic generational oppression. Reparate. Yeah. I, speaking support, of that, I, I support that, Lage. I support that. Well, speaking of that, somebody posted um, something. It said something about the police. And I want to I want to make a correction on a lot of the views about the police because we all have friends that are cops, right? I know you do as well. Um, guys, what's going on in the police force is absolutely ridiculous. Um, me and Keon just attended that rally for Christian Hall. Yeah. And I want everybody to please realize that what's going on right now is absolutely horrible and we're fighting for this. We're trying to get this changed right and and i believe the george floyd act was just passed which is awesome um but please keep in mind like every other industry right this crap that's going on with the cops that's literally less than one percent of a hundred percent it still shouldn't be one percent anyway right so when you guys see a police officer don't automatically think he's the enemy because majority of them happen to be good guys unfortunately there there are idiots out there that are bad apples that are making you see the rest of them the same but it's not right because i have good friends that are even african-american that are police officers that are fathers and they're trying to do right and good cops hate bad cops i'm telling you that right now good cops hate bad cops and just be mindful i'm angry too just like you but I'm just asking people, please be mindful. When you do see a police officer, not every one of them are bad. I get what you guys are going through. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I feel like, you know, that's true. But the issue is the disproportionate, um, yeah. the disproportionate um, mistreatment of black people from that small select few of, of, of bad cops, which is, right. you know, is the reason why, you know, it's happening. Unfortunately, right. we're not hearing about, you know, um, you know, <laughs> a white person's, you know, being Correct. You know, choked to death by a cop, you know, in the context That's right. of Gardner and mm -hmm. in the context of George Floyd. You're not hearing, you know, somebody getting, you know, a, a white person being shot in the back by police, you know. Um, unfortunately, it's disproportionately against black people. Right. That's the reason why it's an outcry. And it's very important. Yeah. You know, of course, not all, bad, all cops are bad. That is a mm -hmm. given. But you know, the issue is, again, with the system, how often that is disproportionately set against people of color. That's what needs to be changed. Those right. prices need to be totally um, rooted out and, that's right. and, and rid of. So, you know, that's, 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 what, that's what we're fighting. That's what we're fighting. Yep. Yeah, and you know what? And I think it's time that more cops stand out.
Again, somebody against said, the bad cops. Somebody said the good ones need to call out the bad ones, but they. I don't. just said that. Yeah, yeah, and I agree with that person. Whoever just said that, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Hundred percent agree. That's the fact, but again, it, it comes down to the idea that most people see things and they don't say something. You got to do right. something. You got to say something. But people, they fall in line way too often. Once they fall in line, once they they become um, complicit in the acts, and that's they, right. And, and they begin to perpetuate the systemic oppression, perpetuate the right. systemic murders, perpetuate the systemic locking up of, of people of color, not just people, mm -hmm. but all kind of people. Um, they perpetuate this, um, the, you know, the xenophobia. They perpetuate the idea of, you know, keeping women down. So we, we need to get to a place that people are talking, speaking about injustice, because if, if it happens to you, it can happen to yours. If it, if it exactly. happens to you, it can happen to me, you know? And most people don't realize it. They feel like these these scenarios are just one and done. I right. never thought I'd be in a scenario where I'd be, you know, marching or, you know, protesting for myself, protesting with my family, with you know, for my son. I never thought that. Even before mm -hmm. all of this happened, I was writing I was writing music, you know, for for Mike Brown and for other people and standing right. up, you know, going to rallies for George Floyd, you know, in the summertime, right. mm -hmm. playing my trumpet, doing whatever I could to, to get the message to to show a greater image of black people. I've been doing that. This is nothing new to me, but it's just so, you know, but it, it doesn't stop with me. It's just we have to realize that if, it, if it's not happening to you now, it could happen to you later. Or it can happen Correct. to somebody you love. So you got to be ready and you got to stand up. You know, you can't be silent when shit ain't going right. Yep. And I thank you. I honestly, Keon, thank you for saying all that. And this is what I was trying to do with this interview tonight. Me and you have the same vision. We may have different angles from it, but there's a way to agree. And I'm not even disagreeing. You know, what I say, I'm coming from where I came from, where you say you're coming from where you come from, but it's about having these conversations where we can get to the next level so we don't have to keep having these conversations. You know what I'm saying? It's, and that's what I'm trying change. to tell people. This is what it's about. Yeah, yeah, it's about change. It's about, you know, that's right. getting the information out there and communicating and, and, and asking what is it that you instinctively dislike about me or what is it that you instinctively don't know about me what is it that makes you feel a certain way about me those biases are the things that that really cause confusion that really cause um trauma that really cause things to happen to people and most people don't even know like i said most people i, I really feel genuinely want to do good but sometimes these biases are the things that really lead to 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 detrimental behavior. That's right. One hundred percent agree. And um, I, I just want to see more people have these talks, man. Even if they feel a little uncomfortable, just get it out. And if you talk more and you listen to each other more, things will get done slowly, but they will get done. And listen, Keon, we can't convince everyone, but if we can at least convince those that were wrongfully raised in a way that shouldn't have been then and if more and more people did that i think this world would be a lot better if people would just really just understand because if you really think about it all this crap that's going on racism it's the dumbest thing in the world absolutely like really it's so stupid like how the hell do we get here you know it's and and i'm not trying to get religious but you know, a lot of people do say, I mean, Jesus, if you really want to think about it, was pretty much a colored man, right? And these are the same people that white supremacists look up to. So, and this is what I'm trying to figure out. Like, there is there is no logic behind the hate that people have towards each other. Because if you actually ask them, well, why don't you like this person? Their answer is pretty much anger with no logic, Right. Now, if I don't like somebody, it's probably because they're just a jerk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be around them. But if I say, I don't like Keon because he's darker than me, that is some dumb ass ignorant thing I've ever heard in my life. And that's where we're having the problem with the police force because unfortunately, 
there are a lot of people in the police force that unfortunately are armed. So I think what needs to be done is more psych evaluation, right? How about a lie detector test every goddamn month? Every month, whether they like it or not. I don't want cops to get a lie detector test every month, but you know what? We're at the point right now where the force needs to step up and start doing little things like this on the regular. Mandatory drug test, psych evaluation, right? Lie detector. Every month, hey, if you want to be a cop, you don't want to go through this crap, then go get another job. Because I'd be damned if another cop who's a white racist or whatever is going to get armed because now I'm going to be scared also for my life because I'm the type of dude, and I think people are starting to get, if I'm with Keon and I see somebody step up, I think Keon may know I'm probably going to step in front of you. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to be like, yo, what the hell are you doing? And I may get shot. So I'm telling the cops right now, step up your game and start evaluating all this stuff. Because guys like Christian Hall should not even be killed and he's an Asian American. And why the hell do we need a videotape to prove that you were wrong? Because you guys got caught. And that's where the other problem with the system is. Cops say, no, we shot him because he, he had a gun, right? That's what they said. Video comes out. He wasn't even close to a weapon. In fact, he was like this. And he kept yelling, please don't shoot. Now the cops are silent. So there also has to be who's right and who's wrong. And why do we need a videotape to happen? Same thing with you, right? Your son, who looks like one of the most innocent kids in the world, was waiting for dad to get brunch, right? That's all you were looking to do. You were looking to get something to eat. You spend five, $6,000 minimum on a hotel for the holidays because you wanted to be a good dad and stay with your kid. Your kid's downstairs waiting for pop. Some girl walks into the lobby who's not even staying there and immediately says, he has my phone. All these people around, and she picks the young black kid, right? And then she says, oh, but I did that with somebody else too. Really? I I'm kind of curious. Did you happen to tackle the other person too that you were yelling at? Were you going all up about it? And this is where the problem lies too. It shouldn't get to the point where we have to see the video to know who's lying and who's not. It has to come down with facts of truth and justice. And until that happens, guys like Keon, Gwen Carr, Sean Bell, G Floyd, everybody, and the white community, and the, and the Asian, and the Hawaiians, and the Puerto Ricans, you all need to start coming out and stand together. Because if we don't stand together, like we are in COVID, it's not going to be alone together. It's going to be alone apart if we don't stand together. And that's what we need to do. 100%, we, gotta, we, we definitely gotta stand tall together. And mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of things that can be done that's not that difficult. Um, you know, and one of the first things is just believe. Just believe people, give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people of color don't get the benefit of the doubt. And that's something that needs to be changed. And it has to do with that's the right. images that, that are put in the air every day that says, you that's know, right. so it, it needs to stop. Exactly. And you and I, and I'm going to thank you because you didn't have to come with me and do this, but we've been doing some cool things lately. And I appreciate you for believing in me and helping because... You know, it's, I knew that was hard for you to be like, yeah, I'll do that. We're not going to name Wit, but Keon and I have been having conversation with a pretty big corporation, just talking about diversity, belonging, and inclusion. I have to thank my brother for that, Keith. And we're making headway right now. Mm -hmm. And this happens to be a company who happens to own a couple of the football teams in the NFL. So uh, it's about talking. And everything else Keon's doing – spreading love through music, pretty much imitating the words of Bob Molly through his trumpet, which I love because music is peace. And um, yes, indeed. I, I, I have to um, remember the one thing that Bob Molly said, and I think Will Smith mentioned it. Remember when he was doing a peace concert and somebody went to his home and shot him down, right? And then two days later, he got up at, back on that stage and somebody in the free me media is like, wait, what are you doing here? Why are you up here? And he pretty much said, there are those in this world that are trying to make this world worse, and they're not taking a day off. 
how can I light up the darkness? Mm -hmm. That was probably right up there with anything that Martin Luther King had to say. And uh, it's guys like him and you that I will always look up to because no matter the struggle, you keep your focus on the future. You keep your focus on your family, on your pride. You're a good father. You're obviously a good husband. And you're a good friend, dude. And all, all communities and all races should aspire to be as great of a person as you are. And I, I really mean that with all my heart, dude. I appreciate that, brother. It's a work in progress. Work in progress. Every day. Exactly. You know, got to keep it, keep it moving and keep pushing for something greater. Because um, I believe we deserve and we want a, 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 a better and more loving humanity for everybody. So, you know, I'm pushing for that. Definitely. Well, we have a few minutes more. Is this something I always ask? Um, is this something that you would like to tell your following? Um, inspirational? I'm sure you have a lot that some of these people may want to hear because whether you believe it or not, you are a mentor and you are somebody a lot of these guys look up to. So, floor is yours. Oh man, for me, it's, it's, it's really simple. You know, be the, be, be, be the change that you want to see. So I continually do that every day. You know, um, character is something that um, people can't take away. People can't take your character away. Entitlement, you know, people act a certain way because of entitlement. But if you worked and you 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 have character, character will let people know that. Listen, it's about love. It's about building. It's about edification. It's not about tearing down, and it's not about um, you know singling out people. It's about making this place a better place for all of us to exist. And that's what I'm about. You know, that's. And that's what my music is about. That's what my heart says. You know, um, it's about raising our kids in a place that's better than what we realized. So, you know, that that's that's what I'm pushing for. Period. Nothing more than that. That's beautiful, man. Thank you for saying that. Um, before we go, I'm gonna mention this, and then I'm gonna go through everything. The person I'm speaking to tomorrow, I had a long conversation with him. We're looking to put together something, possibly a documentary, and I believe he's working with the Floyd family as we speak. I spoke to him yesterday, and I told him about you, and he definitely wants to do something with you as well. Hmm. Um, I'm going to be interviewing them tomorrow night, and we're going to get into that one set because this is exciting stuff that's happening right now. Um, and they have the power to bring everybody together. That's no joke. And they're already working on it. Um, where can people follow you, uh, find you, uh, get to know you better uh, on social media? Well, I'm here on Instagram, just my name, Keon Harold, K-E-Y-O-N-H-A-R-R-O-L-D. That's for all of my social media. It's all the same. There's no, yep. you know, no differences. It's it, that's just look for my name, and if you want to see what's going on with me, just Google me. Um, for the most part, I pretty much hang a lot of who I am. You know, I put it out there. There's nothing to hide because I, I keep it 100. Um, and I feel like truth vibrates. Truth vibrates more than anything else. You know, truth vibrates. So I'm going continue, to continually try to perpetuate truth. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I love it. Well, on that, um, if you guys don't know, I've been speaking with Keon Harold, a uh, trumpeter, a Grammy Award winner, composer, producer, great dad, civil rights activist. Uh, this is FaceTime with Todd Wharton. Um, you can follow me at Todd Wharton, W-H-A-R-T-O-N, official. Five nights a week, I, I inter interview celebrities, politicians, and influential people from around the world, five nights a week. Um, to give you guys an update, next week, we have a great lineup. Uh, I have one of the top break in New York City, Kid Glide. Stacey Pressman, who's a mayoral candidate, is going to be here next week. Keith Shockley from Public Enemy. We have Stanley Livingston. If you guys know the show, My Three Sons, the second longest show ever in the history of TV from the 50s, he's got to be on here. And then we got Buddy White from the R&B group intro uh, from back in the 90s. But before we go, tomorrow night is an epic night for me and I think for a lot of people. I have a new studio. So as of tomorrow, FaceTime uh, with Todd Warden is going to be in his own studio. And to start off tomorrow night, if you guys aren't aware, 
on Amazon Prime, Coming to America is going to be out tomorrow night, the second one. And I have in the house Casey Amos and John Amos from Coming to America is going to be in the house tomorrow night. And we're going to chop it up about the movie, about what they're doing right now. And then that's the gentleman I was just telling you about, Keon. I'm going to speak to you more offline about that coming days after that interview. Perfect. And we're going to have a lot of fun, guys. This is what this is about. It's about getting deep. It's about getting personal. But it's about talking about the truth. Not just the celebrities you see on an everyday basis, but the ones behind the scenes and celebrities that are stepping up for us. And that's what Keon's been doing since he's been a kid, whether he knows it or not. <laughs> so, so Keon, man, bro, seriously, thank you for being on FaceTime My with Todd pleasure. Warden. My pleasure. I appreciate you, man. We're, yes, you're going to be seeing us a lot more. We're going to say hi to Mr. Ben Crump, one of the best civil rights attorney of all time. Guys, follow him as one. well. He's, he's the number one attorney, number one black attorney for the last 10 years. He's crazy. And he's a great guy on top of it. Great guy. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But on behalf of myself and Keon, what I always say at the end of my show, guys, please wear a mask. Please practice social distancing. If you don't believe in it, believe it for your kids, believe it for your family. Because at the end of the day, ignorance has no place to put somebody at death because we all have a right to live the same life, no matter the color, no matter the gender, and no matter the sexual orientation. We all deserve to live a fruitful life. Guys, have a great night. And if you're not living a passionate life, then whose life are you living? Have a good night, guys. All Thank right. you, Keon. Thank you. All right. Peace and love.